was graciously referenced in the Coinbase wallet presentation. Um, awesome, so yeah, thanks everyone for coming to see this talk, and yeah, a big shout out to the event organizers as well um, for orchestrating this huge event. Um, my first ETH Denver was actually back in 2018, uh, and things were obviously extremely different back then. Um, and it's crazy how big the industry has gotten. Uh, ETH, ETH Denver 2018 was actually the birthplace of ERC721. Um, so obviously a lot's changed. Uh, and it's been really amazing to see all the progress that we've made together so far. Uh, so yeah, cheers to that. Uh, but anyway, transitioning to the actual talk. So today I want to talk a little bit about the topic of future proofing wallets uh, for Web3. Uh, and I think that we've learned a number of uh, very valuable lessons while building Phantom um, throughout our experience serving over 3 million users uh, in Web3 on the Solana ecosystem. And with our up upcoming multi-chain release, uh, we're taking a lot of these hard lessons learned and bringing them to the Ethereum and Polygon ecosystems. And uh, I think that we've created a wallet experience that is the safest and easiest to use on the market. So before we start, just a little bit about myself. So my name is Brandon Millman. I am the CEO and co-founder of Phantom. Uh, before starting Phantom, I actually worked in the Ethereum space from 2017 to 2021 at a company called ZeroX, uh, which builds decentralized exchange technology on EVM chains. Uh, if anyone's ever used Matcha at XYZ or Xerox API, which is uh, integrated into Coinbase Wallet, then I helped those bring those products to life. Uh, after four years of working in the Ethereum space, uh, I realized something. Uh, as a dApp developer or protocol developer, um, your growth and UX is basically completely bottlenecked by the wallet experience, and uh, things are just not really getting better. Um, every time you onboard a user or ask them to do like anything at all, uh, the wallet sits in that critical funnel, um, and so. I thought that the highest leverage place to spend my time uh, and efforts in Web3 uh, was by fixing the wallet layer. Uh, and by fixing the wallet layer, we can simultaneously speed up growth of the, uh, and usage across the entire ecosystem. Uh, so in 2021, I started Phantom. So here's how I would describe the wallet problem. The wallet problem is the advancement of blockchains has created a powerful set of tools for new, a new wave of developers to build a next generation internet, quote unquote, Web3. The wallet is a tool used to explore this new internet, and the wallet's job is to ensure that the user can access Web3 in an intuitive, easy, and most importantly, safe manner. And yeah, I just wanna emphasize uh, the, the safe keyword in that statement, and that's, that's where I'm gonna be focusing the majority of this, of this talk. So for those of you who don't know Phantom, uh, we're currently the number one wallet in the Solana ecosystem. We're essentially the MetaMask of the Solana ecosystem and we're available on extension iOS and Android. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're actually bringing this experience that we've honed for the last year and a half uh, from Solana to the Polygon and Ethereum ecosystems. And we're currently testing this multi-chain version of the app with around 70,000 beta testers. Uh, if you wanna help test this, just come find me after this talk and I can help you get set up. All right, so if anyone is a Dragon Ball Z fan, then you may recognize this location. So this is the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> the hyperbolic time chamber is a training zone where you, you go there to train under harsh conditions so that you can become like a Super Saiyan or whatever, right? So I like to describe our last year and a half on the Solana ecosystem like training in the hyperbolic time chamber. Uh, the combination of Solana's low fees like the quick rise of the NFT ecosystem there and a quick rise from zero to three million users just created this perfect storm of really harsh conditions for anyone building Web3 apps on Solana. And the space really became a target for, a really hot target for scamming and phishing. Um, and we were really that first line of defense for all those users. And just to give you a quick sense of the scale that we dealt with over the last year. So in the last year, three million plus Phantom users made 317 million transactions in app. So that's actually a little bit over 10 transactions per second, which is equivalent to the entire throughput of the Ethereum network, like in, in total. So we were doing that uh, uh, sort of like on, a, on an average basis through last year, all just human activity through the app. And so through that activity, we've able, been able to learn uh, a few things. So today I'm gonna be talking about a couple of those things and 
talking about four lessons that we've learned while building a wallet at high scale. So first is help users understand transaction signing, which was talked a little bit about in the previous talk. Two, expect NFT spam, especially in a low fee environment. Three, expect fake websites. And four, invest in customer support. And I just want to add that these lessons are basically applicable for anyone out there building Web3 wallets, um, or sorry, Web3 applications, not just wallets, uh, and not just Phantom. So lesson one is help users understand what they're signing. So everyone's probably familiar with this pop-up here. So this is the standard experience of signing a transaction today. Pretty much all you can glean from this is that you're interacting with Uniswap in some way, and you're sending 0.073 ETH somewhere. Um, but in reality, this transaction can be doing a number of different things to your ERC-20s, like transfers or approvals. And honestly, you would have no idea what this is by looking at it. And a normal person has no hope of understanding what this is doing. In Phantom, we use a technique called transaction simulation. Uh, to show you what exactly is going on with your transaction, it's a little bit hard to see, but in this case, it's actually revealed that this same transaction that we were, we were viewing previously uh, will not just debit 0.073 ETH from your account, uh, it will also result in a credit of 113 DAI. So turns out, under the lens of this transaction simulation, you can actually tell that this uh, transaction approval is a trade. And yeah, again, if you're a normal user, if you're even a developer, you would have no idea what this was about to do with, the, with uh, you know, the approval on the left. So uh, here's another example of interacting with a potentially malicious site. Again, it's a little bit hard to see, but the pop-up might look, if you're look, interacting with something malicious, the pop-up might look something like this. Uh, transaction simulation will actually reveal that this application is issuing mass approvals uh, for tokens, and it's, it's likely something that you don't want to be doing as a user. So. We've actually had this transaction simulation system running live in Solana for the second half of last year, and the results have honestly been uh, incredible. So we've simulated over 85 million transactions just in the last, uh, basically the last six months, and over 85 million transactions, we were able to pre prevent over 18,000 unique instances of theft. So to put that in perspective, there's like 18,000 people registered for, for this event or whatever, so imagine this entire uh, conference getting wiped out by scams. We were able to protect those people in the, la in the last six months. In the first month of this year alone, we've protected over 3,000 unique users from getting drained. So yeah, I just want to underscore these stats because it's super important. We, you only really hear about all of like the high profile cases of theft, um, but you don't really hear about sort of the thousands of cases that go unreported where people are essentially too embarrassed or anything to really talk about it and they, they just really leave the space. So uh, yeah, I believe that Web3, everyone talks about Web3 having an onboarding problem. My belief is that the biggest problem that faces the Web3 space is the retention problem. Um, and we have a huge retention problem around scams. And it's basically our responsibility and my responsibility running a wallet to be fully committed to solving that problem. Okay, so next up, expect NFT spam. So. As many of you know, Solana is an ultra low fee environment. We're moving towards that direction with ETH L2s and whatnot. And so uh, NFT spam is going to be a, a huge problem in the next you know, one to two years. So this is what your NFT profile uh, portfolio would look like if scammers did not exist. This is kind of the ideal state where you see all of your blue chips or whatever. So in reality, this is what your wallet really looks like. So if you if you hold if anyone here holds any sort of like blue chip NFT like an Azuki or a Board Ape, your wallet is the constant target of spam. If you look at your Polygon wallet, it's completely ridden with with spam. And um, so if you click into one of these, you'll usually see instructions for claiming some sort of prize or airdrop, and these links lead to like unsuspecting users getting getting robbed. And so the NFT spam problem is actually very similar to email spam. Um, your email inbox is sort of this permissionless way for anyone on the internet to send you a message. And email clients evolved over time to implement spam filters. Um, wallets that support NFTs also need to implement spam filters in order to protect their users. And this is just going to be a baseline thing going forward. Um, in Phantom, we've implemented an NFT spam filter that actually hides all of these um, malicious NFTs into a separate section at the bottom. 
and uh, can be opened and inspected uh, just, like, just like you would email. And this greatly reduces the chances of a user falling victim to one of these scams. Uh, if a scam escapes the filter, users can actually report it, report it to help our models get smarter over time, also very similar to email. Um, as a side note, we also have this like in-app burn feature um, where that helps users permanently remove spam from their wallet instead of just hide it. And uh, yeah, over the back half of 2022, users have burned over 740,000 uh, NFTs, so people love to clean up their wallets. All right, so next up, is less than three, expect fake websites. So this is one that we have a lot of experience with. So as you may know, um, there are many websites out there whose sole purpose is to mimic an existing popular application. So think of like uh, Uniswap, which is pictured here, OpenSea, Magic Eden, et cetera. Um, these websites' game is to trick the user into signing a transaction that will compromise their assets in some way. Um, if you reach any kind of scale or popularity as a DAP, you, you will be affected by this problem. Um, users usually end up on these sites through like things like social media or Telegram or Discord or things like that. Um, scammers will actually also take out Google ads to point users to these sites. So this is something that we've dealt with personally quite a bit. If you Google Phantom, uh, usually the ad slot is uh, pointing to some fake site. Uh, and some will go as far as to register fake mobile apps as well, something that we also have a lot of experience with, fake Android apps specifically. Um, and yeah, so uh, because Phantom is a browser extension, um, it's interesting that we actually are able to leverage a lot of unique capabilities through Chrome APIs that we can actually block users from accessing these malicious sites in the first place. Um, so if you have Phantom installed and you try it to access a known phishing site, uh, there's a chance Phantom will actually look like, the, the website will actually look like this, and Phantom will block the contents of this site. And we actually maintain, uh, we actually provide this service for not only Solana ecosystem sites, but for uh, sites across the ecosystem, as well as Ethereum and Polygon. Um, and the way this is achieved uh, is actually using uh, an open source community maintained block list on GitHub uh, that the, the ecosystem sort of rallies around to report mal malicious websites. So. As DAP developers uh, discover scams, they're added here, and they're automatically fanned out to all other Phantom users. Uh, other wallets in this space have also centered around uh, this list specifically. And yeah, over time, this list has uh, accumulated over 2,000 fake websites. And uh, on top of that, so once, once a fake website is reported to us, um, we actually work with a third-party service uh, to get these sites permanently taken down. So there's a really big operational aspect to this as well. Uh, it's not just stuff that goes on in the app. It's a whole operation outside. And so, um, yeah, so with those third-party services, we've actually been able to take down over 1,000 malicious sites and uh, over 250 social media accounts, uh, which are aimed at driving users towards these sites. So um, last but not least is lesson four, which is please invest in your customer support experience. So. The vast majority of projects in this space utilize a public chat system like Discord or Telegram to provide customer support to their users. And this is actually an extremely dangerous and honestly borderline negligent practice. Um, you're, you're taking users who are in, like, in this agitated, distressed state, um, and maybe they, you know, they just fat fingered a trade or they lost access to their account and th through some crucial moment, and they're looking frantically for help. And then they go to Discord, they're told to go to Discord, they're met by someone who's, who claims to be support. You know, again, they're like super distressed, they don't know what's going on really, and they end up you know, being extremely vulnerable and, and um, you know, at risk to phishing. And so there's actually a much better way to do this. This is a, this is a completely solved problem in Web 2.0, and there's, no, there's actually no reason to be doing this this way. Um, so this is what the entry point for customer support looks like for Phantom users. Um, the experience is actually predominantly self-serve, um, and it includes a repository of like educational content and uh, like instant answers and FAQ. And this is like, actually dynamic content that that gets better over time uh, as as we learn more about the, the the popular scams that are out there and everything. So, um, but if the user is unable to help themselves, then they speak to uh, directly to a human support agent. Um, so yeah, just some stats about uh, how we treat customer support. So 
we, we really treat customer support as a professional operation uh, with metrics tracking, goaling, et cetera. Uh, so for example, in order to make sure we're properly like, supporting users, we track things like median resolution time and number of tickets resolved. And again, this is like all solved problem stuff that please do not send your users to Discord for support. Um, and that's just like for the, for the good of the entire industry. Um, and yeah, the, the help center that I showed before uh, has actually been uh, viewed over a million times over the last year. So um, users are, are really able to help themselves when you provide like education to them. So that's pretty much it for me. Um, just to recap, so four lessons that um, I uh, think are uh, crucial for future-proofing uh, Web3. It, one, help users understand transaction signing. Two, expect NFT spam. Three, definitely expect, expect fake websites. And four, please invest in customer supports. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Just a reminder again, we're, we're in beta right now, testing support for Ethereum Polygon. Uh, I'd, love for, I'd love for everyone to help us test. All of the user safety features that I went over are available in this 